Hey guys! So continuing on with the advanced tutorials for Apex, in today's video I want to take a look at Mirage and explain how are you actually supposed to play effectively with the character. Whenever someone brings up the topic of Mirage, there is always people claiming that the character will be completely useless once the player base gets used to its decoys and will understand which ones aren't the real character or the real player. But let me tell you, it's not true. And players who keep repeating this simply have a narrow vision and don't understand how you can fully utilize Mirage. So yeah, we're gonna take a look at all of the aspects as well as in the other tutorials, abilities, weapons, best environment, role in the team, as well as synergies with other legends. Let's hop into it. As for the passive ability, Mirage can actually cloak himself for 5 seconds and deploy a distraction decoy when he gets knocked out. And this one is useless. I'm not gonna lie, it is super predictable and players who play Apex for a bit know already that it is the passive ability of Mirage and you just have to look for the other guy on the ground, not the decoy. There isn't really much to talk about here, but the tactical ability is where it gets fun. Because here is the thing, you can select a place on the map where you want your decoy to run towards and you can make it run there. What 99.9% .9 of players do not understand while playing Mirage and using this ability is that you're not supposed to use the decoy as a distraction in a way where you just point the direction and get the decoy to run towards it. It's not going to distract enemies. Of course, they will be able to tell the difference between a real player and a decoy. But the thing is, it's all about this moment. It's all about temporal distraction. You're not supposed to keep their attention on the decoy for like 5 seconds or even longer. No, you're supposed to keep their attention on the decoy so that you can rotate, you can push them, or better, provide distraction while pushing so that they don't know which player is actually real. And let me give you an example of this. Before I do, I just want to clear this out because many players miss this. Decoys have actual footsteps. So, let's say a stupid easy scenario. Bangalore smokes the enemies and you want to run into them and finish them or start attacking them. Well, what you can do is get the decoy to run into the smoke and the enemies don't know. Is it a real player? Is it a decoy? Because the only thing they can judge on is the footsteps and footsteps are identical to a normal player. Let me give you another example. You have to push an enemy who's hiding either in a house or behind hard cover and they don't have you in their line of sight, but they will hear your footsteps. With all of the other legends in the game, you don't have any element of distraction. But with Mirage, you can first send a decoy to get them distracted that there is someone pushing them because they can hear footsteps from the decoy and then you, as the real Mirage, you can come in from other side and finish them off because they will be focused in those splits of second they will be focused on the decoy it's not about fooling them for a long time it's about those temporal distractions keep in mind you can only deploy one decoy at a time and you will have to wait 14 seconds to deploy another one they also get stuck on pretty much anything on the map so make sure they're actually not gonna run into something and get stuck on it when you are choosing their path and yeah then we have the ultimate ability. This one takes a bit longer than 14 seconds to actually recharge, in fact it is 3 minutes, but this time you can actually cloak and also deploy multiple decoys in a place where you started cloaking so that when someone runs there, well, they get confused. Keep in mind, your ultimate ability can be countered by Bloodhound when he is using his ultimate. You can cloak yourself for 5 seconds, which tends to be super useful if you either want to flank your opponents or get away from the fight. We're gonna talk about his ultimate ability a bit more in a second when we focus on the role in the team, but first let's take a look at the weapons. What guns should you pick when you're playing Mirage? Most of the time you will be playing aggressively, so the list will be pretty much similar to what we had for Bangalore or even Bloodhound and first of all the R301 assault rifle then Prowler SMG, of course with the select fire receiver to make it fully automatic, the R99 SMG, shotguns, both Peacekeeper and Mastiff from the supply drops, as well as Devotion. 
it is super good if you manage to get the turbocharger for it. If you don't have it, it will be a bit more difficult to play with it up close because it will take you longer to actually reach the maximum rate of fire of the gun, which doesn't really benefit you in a close quarter engagements, but you can still do well with it, regardless. Of course we have the wingman pistol at the end as in all of the tutorials, but wingman is overpowered on pretty much all of the distances, but you have to actually hit the shots accurately if you want to maximize its potential. As for the best environment to utilize Mirage in, it's pretty versatile, but then again, you're gonna get the most advantage out of the character itself with the decoys and cloaking on close distances. Cloaking lasts for 5 seconds and decoys, well, if they keep running for too long, as we already established at the beginning of the video, enemies will see through it and they will be able to tell it's not a real player. When it comes to your role in a team as Mirage, as we already established, close distances equals offensive legend. You're supposed to be the guy scoring kills, and if you want to stay in the back, don't play Mirage. Your abilities are designed to help you in a direct engagement with the enemies, so don't be afraid of making a use of them. You have to utilize them if you want to get the advantage over your opponents. And again, before I get someone in the comments saying Oh, but I play Mirage defensively and it works really well, I want a game like this. Of course, it's not about strictly being only aggressive when you're playing Mirage, but it's all about the general approach to the playstyle with the Legend. Of course you can play defensively with Mirage, but in the same way I could say that I can play Gibraltar offensively. Of course, can I score kills? Yes, I can, it is doable. Is it effective to play as an attacking character with Gibraltar? Not really, because the specializations or the abilities weren't designed to do so. And I know there is multiple things which are possible to do with characters which weren't designed for it specifically because all of the characters can pick up the same weapons, they can use the same attachments, and therefore they can still shoot enemies. But is it the best idea to play this way? Not exactly. Anyway, when it comes to synergies with other legends, Mirage is, well, again, best combined with aggressive characters. If you want to get double flank, double invisibility, so to say, because Wraith is technically visible when she's in the void, but then again you can't really shoot her, so it's like, you know what I'm saying. Put Mirage together with Wraith, and you will be able to just get a perfect jump on your opponents. Combine it with Bangalore, use the tactic we talked about at the beginning of the video while talking about the tactical ability and shoot the smoke onto your opponents, get the decoy to run into the smoke to get them distracted and then, after they are distracted, get a jump on them. Again, there is so many tactics you can actually come up with when you are playing the game, but you just have to think about it. You have to be open-minded when playing with characters such as Mirage or even with Bangalore. There is so many ways you can utilize those two, but you need to understand the game mechanics and be creative to achieve it. We've also got Bloodhound, which you could use if you want to play aggressively with Mirage and... or, well, you always want to play aggressively with Mirage, but if you want to play aggressively with your teammates and get the advantage of two offensive characters in the team, you can, as always, combine it with Lifeline or Pathfinder, but those two legends, they're pretty much universal, you can always combine them with anything. They will not really benefit one another in the direct combat, but they will be a fitting choice, pretty much. The only two legends I can't really see being combined with Mirage are Kastik and Gibraltar, because those don't really benefit Mirage in any way when it comes to the abilities and can't really utilize those. I mean, of course, you can always pick Gibraltar or Kastik with any legend, but it's not about picking the legend, it's about getting the most out of it. And with those two, Mirage doesn't seem to have anything in common that they could utilize together. Anyway guys, that would be it for this tutorial. If you haven't seen the previous ones talking about other legends, I will leave a link to those on the screen right now so you can click it, there is a full playlist explaining those, pick whichever one you like and yeah, as always, if you enjoyed, remember to leave a like, 
subscribe and I see you in Apex. See ya.